You're dirt. Fuck you. Fuck you. Fucking sick. Fucking. Two teams, one state, two games. The Black Gold Derby, the Bedlam of Soccer. A classic rivalry between Oklahoma City and Tulsa, with roots planted back in the days of hockey, arena football, and a variety of other sports. We now anticipate the days until Tulsa receives a 90-plus minute scalp-tearing noogie from their older brother. An orange and blue bundle is born in Tulsa, Oklahoma. Playing home games at a baseball field, we watch this club take its first steps towards their destiny of not becoming an up-and-down erratic team, but more like a roller coaster that is completely flat with one small bump followed by a dead end. This first outing, the Roughnecks finished their season with 11 wins and losses, with 6 draws. While they miss the playoffs and lose their derby, this isn't a terrible start for a first-year team, and Energy fans are excited to have a new sibling to have a rivalry with. Fuck me, that went south quick. Going from hopeful to dear God put it out of its misery, it was not meant for this world. The Roughnecks season lacked everything. You notice players and coaches frantically googling the word defense, with the only bright spot being Sammy Oates' 11 goals. As a result, the Oil Rats would finish a pathetic 5 wins, 4 draws, and an embarrassing 21 losses. The worst team in the USL, and as you guessed it, they did not win the Black Gold Army. They called me Tasty Cakes, and they would beat me and stick pine cones in my ass! <laughs> This is the year our little bro finally made a flip on the radar, and wasn't a joke of the league. That distinction was held by T2 in 2017. The majority of goals would come from Juan Kappa, Joey Calistri, and most of all, Ian Spentessen. And Tulsa would even feature future OKC backup goalie Brian Byers. For this season, the slut finishes with 14 wins and losses, with 4 draws. And on a side note, while writing this, I notice that every time I look at the standings from season to season, my eyes naturally drift to the bottom of the table. This is the only season which my eyes had to look up slightly. The Roughnecks have two firsts this season, making the playoffs and winning the Black Gold Derby. Of course, the postseason, they were quickly shown the door in the first round by San Antonio, who the energy beat the next round before advancing to the Western Finals, and only won their derby with the help of some bad goal-denying offside call. Fuck you guys. Twenty seventeen being the slight spike of success brings the misery of the twenty eighteen campaign. At last we will have revenge. A traumatic flashback of twenty sixteen, this time with more draws than losses and fewer wins. Unable to retain anything resembling talent, Tulsa reverts back to the Dark Ages as Spentessen gets the hell out of town. The Roughnecks would finish with 12 draws, 19 losses, and a frustrating 3 wins. To only add to the failure, which is a tradition at the club, they lose their derby but do it in the most epically comedic of fashions, tapping in and finding their inner squeak Scolari becoming the little bitch of the league to the extent that they might as well just sub in some drunk fan from the crowd and hope for the best. I am not a piece of shit. Well, yeah, but you're a little bitch. Sure. God damn it, man! The Wrench returns to OKC after the energy dominate the Roughnecks, but returns so battered and scuffed that we consider permanently powder coating it green. Way to not be able to handle your beer and drop the Wrench a hundred fucking times, guys. On the one hand, I'm not surprised by the performance Tulsa has displayed in their 2019 campaign so far. The organization appears to be ran well enough, and during the offseason, Tulsa was finally able to sign players with decent resumes. On the other hand, I didn't expect them to be sitting on top of the West for the first few weeks. I predict the Roughnecks will have an improved season, squeaking into the playoffs briefly, but unable to bring the wrench home. The energy this year, I believe, will be too much for their little brother. OKC had a few hiccups defensively in recent games, but with Lorendi, Highland, and Terravel, just to name a few, the energy are due to gel and become that defensive wall we all know and love. And the added offense of Brown, Bassetti, and Gordon allows the energy the ability to score more than just one goal a game. Come April 27th at One Oak, a baseball field, we will witness yet another classic edition of the Black Gold Derby. A derby which usually just turns into a game of quit hitting yourself. So mark your calendar, prepare road supplies, and retract your pitcher's mounds because the nation of green will be invading a baseball field Tulsa likes to dress up as a soccer pitch. Good luck, Tulsa, and go energy.